Hi guys, welcome back to Dungeons and Dry Brushing. Now I know it's uh, it's not even Wednesday, but I did promise you that I would try to do some Christmas decoration based crafting videos. Well, I hit up my local dollar stores and secondhand shops and came away with a few things that I think we can make into cool projects for D&D. First one is this uh, this arch. It's actually not bad. It's it's pretty usable even as it is, but obviously the Frosty the Snow Angel sculpture, that's going to have to go. We're also going to repaint it, maybe do a few other touch-ups here and there. So stick with me as we go into our first Christmas decoration crafting project. The first step is to get rid of the frosty snow angel sculpture. I started with hand files here, but it quickly became clear that wasn't going to cut it. So instead I moved on to something with a bit more power. Maybe not the right tool for the job exactly, but it's, it's what I have, and it did ultimately work. Okay, so that was a little tougher than I imagined. Uh, I was thinking, you know, from the feel of it and the Made in China sticker on the bottom, that it was probably hollow plastic or, or um, plaster. It's not hollow. And it turns out that the magics protecting Frosty were a lot stronger than I imagined. I ended up having to go to power tools to get it done. Um, but we, we got there. I got most of the, the snow demon off with a combination of power tools and the hand files. Uh, I, I was totally surprised by this. I was expecting this. And I got that. But the snow demon's gone. It's fine now. We'll have to do a little more cover up work than I originally imagined, but it's not going to be a big deal. That said, if you're young and you're doing this on your own, don't use power tools without supervision and permission from your parents. And on top of that, anyone who does something like this in any way when you're working with something that is an unknown material, you are going to want to wear a mask if you are filing away at it. You don't know what it is, but you, you definitely don't want it in your lungs. After priming the model in dark grey, I started the painting process by picking out a few stones I think would look good in a lighter grey, a dark red, and beige. Everything else gets a base coat too. The trees and vines get a dark blue-green, then a lighter green overbrush. The bundles of twigs get a simple brown contrast paint with a pale yellow for the ropes around them, and then everything, the stones, the trees, all of it, gets a dry brush in drake tooth and off-white. The final step in the paint process is of course a wash. I'm going to be using a black oil wash to help bring out the texture, but a homemade acrylic wash made of just tap water, some paint, and a bit of dish soap would work fine. So would something like dark tone or null oil if you prefer that. Of course, even with all the painting done, that doesn't fix the problem of the texture where our pal Frosty was. Now, if you're going to be using this for something like Frostgrave terrain, which it would fit in great with, then you might want to cover this up with snow. But I want this to fit in with my D&D scatter, 
So I'm going to be using moss instead. To make the moss, I'm just going to combine my leftover bits of flocking from old projects with white PVA glue to make it into a paste. Once it's mixed, you simply just smear it onto the area and let it dry. Once dry, it makes a great mossy look and texture that can be useful both for weathering terrain and for covering up your mistakes. And once that's dry, we have our finished product. There we go, guys. It was a little bit of work getting Frosty off of there, but uh, other than that, it's a great project. There's really no complaining about it. For the price of $2, we got a perfect piece of D&D or Mordheim or Frostwraith terrain. And, and there's no beating the price. I mean, even if you have a 3D printer, you're still not going to beat a $2 price line on it. By the time you buy an STL and actually print it, no chance. All right, if you like this video, Please hit like, subscribe. We've got more of these coming in the next couple weeks, as well as the regular Wednesday videos. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you on the next one.